Again, welcome to College of Algebra. In these lectures, we're going to learn the concept of remainder and factor theorems, and also how to use synthetic division. So our main objective is to use the remainder theorem and also the factor theorem, and how to use the synthetic division to divide polynomials and also to evaluate polynomial functions. So we are going to start with an example one. In this example, they say we should evaluate a polynomial function and a long division. So P at X equal to three S cube minus five S square plus three S minus 10 is given to us. Now our question says we should find P at one. After we find P at one, we are going to divide P at X by X minus one. Again, P at X is S three S cubed minus five S square plus three S minus 10. So we are going to divide it by X minus one. So let's start with A. To find P at one, anywhere we see our function P at X, anywhere we see the X, we are going to substitute with one. So, 3s cube will be becomes 3 times 1 cube because s is cube. Second, we have 5s squared, so it will be 5 times 1 squared. And 3s squared will be 3 times 1. So simply anywhere we see x, we substitute it with 1. Now, if I'm looking for p at 10, it means anywhere I will see x in the function, I'm going to substitute it with 10. So we solve this problem. We get three times one is three, five times one, five, three times one again, three, and our constant value minus 10. So three minus five plus three minus 10 will give us minus nine. Now let's go to the second. Now the first theory we are learning here about the remainder theory is that since P at one, the answer is negative nine. It means if we divide three S cube minus five S square plus three X minus 10 by X minus one, our remainder division will be also negative nine. Why? Because there's a rule that if we have P at C and we find P at C, C can be any value and the answer is zero, that means x minus c will be the factor of the function p at x. In this case, since p at one is not zero, it means s minus one is not a factor of p at x. So let's see if we can prove it. So here we are going to do our synthetic division, uh, a long division. This is a long division. Later we'll go through the synthetic division. So here we have three s cube minus five S square plus three X minus 10 divided by X minus one. In a long division method, we normally take the first term, which is the three S cube. We divide by the first term of the divisor, which is X. So three S cube divided by X will give me three S square. Then I'm going to multiply three S square by X and that will give me three S cube. So three S square times S give me three S cube. Then three S square times minus one will give me minus three S square. Then I'm going to subtract three S cube minus three S square from three S cube minus five S square plus three S minus 10. And this will give me three S cube minus three S cube will, give, will cancel minus five S square. Now minus three will become plus because we are doing subtraction. So minus will change to plus. So minus five S square plus three S square will give me minus two S square. Then we take that third term. So we have minus two S square plus three X. The same thing we are going to repeat again. We are going to take the term minus two S square to divide X. So minus two S square divided by X will give me minus two X. Then minus two X times X again will give me minus two S square. 
Then minus 2x times minus 1 will give me plus 2x. Then we are going to subtract minus 2x squared plus 2x from minus 2x squared plus 3x. So minus 2x squared down here, we change to plus 2x squared. Minus 2x squared change to plus 2x squared. We are doing subtraction. So the down, the signs will change. So minus 2x squared plus 2x squared is zero. They cancel each other. Then plus 3x, this is plus, so it will change to minus. Plus 3x minus 2x will give us x. Then we bring our last term, which is minus 10. Then we re repeat the same steps. Divide x by x, and that gives us 1. Then we multiply 1 by x minus 1, and that will give us s minus 1. Then we subtract s minus 1 from s minus 10, and that will give us minus 9. So we can see that again, a P at one, the answer was minus nine. Since this is one and also S minus one, if we divide the function by S minus one, we get the same, the remainder will be minus nine. It's not a factor. Now, if P at one, the answer should be zero, then S minus one will be a factor of P at X which means our remainder will be zero. So let's move on. Next, we talk about the remainder theorem. So that's the example we just went through. Here we say, if P at X is a polynomial function and C is any number and P at X is divided by X minus C, then the remainder also is P at C. And that's the example we just proved right now. Now let's try to use the factor theorem also. So previously we have a remainder theorem. Now let's see factor theorem. The whole concept of factor theorem is that if I have P at X and it's a polynomial function and C is any number, then if I can find P at C and the answer is zero, it means S minus C will be the factor of P at X. So our previous example, uh, P at one, the remainder is not zero. So S minus one cannot be a factor of the P at X. So let's see how this will go by, and we're going to do an example in a second. So let's go through the example. So here they say we should determine whether S plus two is a factor of S to the power four minus seven S squared plus six S. So we can do the long division if we want, but here we just want to determine this two. So what we can do the fastest way is that we have S plus two. So I'm going to find P at X, I'm going to find P at two. If I find P at two and the answer is zero, that means S plus two is a factor of S to the power four minus seven S squared minus six S. That is the fast, fastest way. We can say, okay, we can divide S x uh, to the power of four minus seven s squared minus six s, we can divide it by s plus two. And if the remainder is zero, then it's a factor, but that's, it's a long process. And so best thing is what we're going to do. By factor theorem, we can say s plus two, we can write it as s minus minus two. So now we are going to find p at this value, minus two. So if P at X is a factor of S plus two, then looking for P minus two, the answer should be zero. So that's what we substitute the two, I mean, minus two. Or, so minus two throughout, we saw that is zero, okay? So if minus two is zero, then S plus two is a factor of S to the power of four minus seven S squared minus six. Again, if you divide, P at S by S plus two, you will see that the remainder also will be zero. So here we say since P at negative two equal to zero, we know that X minus minus two or S plus two, in short, the S plus two is the same as S minus minus two, is a factor of P at X. Another way of proving it, which is a long way, just divide P at S by S plus two. So next, we are going to use the synthesis division. 
to divide polynomials. So previously we used the long division and this is synthet synthetic division. So synthetic division is also an easy way to divide higher degree polynomials by binomials, especially for example, our degree is, uh, that's the highest exponent is two, three, there's no need to do synthetic division. We can do long division, but imagine if our higher uh, degree or the exponent is eight, seven or 10. If you are doing long division, that will be a long process. Uh, again, it's straightforward, but we have to go through until we reach X. So best way of doing this is to use the synthetic division. Synthetic division is very quickly and easily comparing to long division. Long division also is easy, but again, it's a long process. If I have S to the power 12, we are going to reduce it all the way to X. And it goes step by step. As we saw our previous example, let's go back at the beginning. We use, you see here, the, the highest degree is only three. So we can see we went through three, two, then one. So if it's 10 and we are dividing by S minus one, well, we will go through nine, eight, seven, I mean, long process. Again, it's the same step over and over, but it will take long. So synthetic, again, is very good and quicker if you have a very higher degree polynomials by binomial. Now, if I'm dividing a higher degree of S10 by S8, well, that's very quick, it will be quick because I don't need to go all the way to one. So let's see an example here. Here we have three S to the power four minus 8s cubed plus 10s plus 3 divided by s minus 2. Actually, this is our question here. Use that synthetic division to divide 10x plus 3s to the power 4 minus 8s cubed plus 3. So the first thing we are going to arrange our polynomial function with the higher degree first or the higher exponent first. So we, we rearrange this as 3s to the power 4 minus 8s cubed plus 10x plus 3. So we're going to divide this by s minus 2. Now, when we look here, first thing we say, we then write the coefficient of the dividend. The dividend, again, is s minus 2, which is 10 in descending powers of x and 2 for, from the divisor in the following form. Uh, sorry, the dividend is the P at X, divisor is the S minus two. So again, first thing we do, we arrange the function with highest degree first so that when we are writing the coefficient, you can see highest, three, negative eight. Now this is four exponent, three, but we don't have square. So we put zero, the position is very important. We put zero then one, then the constant value. So if S to the power 10, then we have to start with 10 of coefficient S to the power nine. If there's no coefficient or no S to the power nine, we put zero. S to the power eight. If there's no expression for S to the power eight, you put zero so that we have exact positions. So here we don't have no S square, so we put zero. Then x, the last will be s, and then the constant value three. Then the coefficient, since here we have s minus two already, we're going to put a two. If it's s plus two, we put minus two. So now we're going to write zero for the coefficient of the missing s squared term. Any term you miss, again, replace it with zero. Then the next step, we're going to bring down our three down. The next, we are going to multiply the two and three, actually see here. So we multiply two and three, then we get six. Then we do the uh, subtraction, minus eight and six will give me minus two, minus two. We had them together, minus eight uh, plus six will give me minus two. Uh, subtraction means six will change to negative, so it will be negative 14. It's rather hard. So after that, we now have negative two. So what we do next, we multiply the two by negative two here and we get negative four. 
Then negative four plus zero will give us negative four. Then we move to the next step two again with negative four, two and negative four will give us negative eight. 10 plus negative eight will give us two. Then we have two here, we multiply by two again, and that will give us four. Then plus four plus four will give us seven. So this is all the step. Again, one more time. This is our question. First, doing synthetic division, we have to arrange the term in, with the highest degree or the highest exponent first. So three x to the power four will be first. Then eight s to the power three will be second. We don't have s squared, so we'll, we go to the next, which is ten x. Then the constant value always lasts. Then we have to arrange this in this form, the coefficient. So we have three minus eight, but we have we are missing s squared, so we represent it with zero. Then ten, then three. Then since this is s minus two, we are going to use positive two here for the divisor. The next step, we are going to bring this three down. Then we multiply two by three. Then we put it under minus eight. Then we add it together. And that's what we have here. Always that is the step. We have the coefficient here. First, we bring the three. Then we multiply coefficient three here by two. And the answer, we put it under eight, which is six. Then we had minus eight and six, we get minus two. Then we multiply minus two by two, we get minus four here. Then we had minus four and zero, we get minus four. Then we multiply minus four by two, we get minus eight. Then we had minus eight and 10, that would give us two. Then we multiply two by two, we get four. Then we had four and three, we get seven. So that's what gives us this answer here. Now, when we reach here, we are going to write everything down. So here we can see the coefficient here. We have three S cubed minus two S square minus four X plus two plus seven divided by S minus two. So that will be our result. So let's try using synthetic division to evaluate polynomial functions and the same concept. So for example, here we are going to use a synthetic division this time to evaluate a polynomial function. Then we find P at negative two when P at S is given to us. So again, instead of substitute, if we're looking for P at negative two, we can substitute negative two into this equation and solve it. But here we're going to use the synthetic division. So because of the remainder theorem P at negative two is the remainder when P at S is divided by S minus minus two, we're going to write the concept as this. So again, first, uh, the question is P at P S cubed man plus three S square minus 21, actually it should be the 21, then divided by S minus one, uh, sorry, 21 X minus one. So because again, the remainder theorem, we know P at negative two is the remainder when P at S is divided by X minus minus two. So here we write minus two, then we have S cube, S, S and one. So they are in order, we don't miss anything. So five, three minus two minus one. So the first thing we do, we bring the five minus five times five, we give us minus 10, minus 10 plus three, we give us minus seven. Then we keep going. So that's what we write here. So we get minus two, five, it gives us minus 10, three plus minus 10, give us minus seven. Then if we have minus seven here, minus two times minus seven, we give us positive 14. Positive 14 minus 21 give us minus seven. Then minus two times minus seven will give us 14 again. 14 and minus one will give us positive 13. Now here we say because the remainder is 13, it means P at negative two will give us 13. And again, that's another way of doing it. But again, 
if we have this question, the best way also you can solve it is by, so, which we did previously. Uh, if I have P at S is 5S cubed plus 3S squared minus 21S minus 1. If I'm looking for P at negative 2, I'm going to substitute negative 2 inside the X's and solve the equation. But if the question says we should use a synthetic division, now because this is negative 2, we are going to have the divisor here beginning here as negative 2 then we write the coefficient of the highest term to the lowest term until we reach constant. But here, since we have x cubed, s square x, we didn't miss any term. So we have the coefficient 5, 3, neg negative 21, and negative 1. And since we're looking for p at negative 2, we use negative 2 here. Now, if I'm looking for p at, uh, let's say, 20, then I'll put 20 down here. So first thing, we bring the 5 down. Then we have negative two times five, we give me negative 10. Negative 10 plus three, we give me negative seven. Then negative two times negative seven, we give me 14. Then 14, negative 21, we give me negative seven. Negative seven and two, we give me negative two and negative seven, we give me plus 14. And plus 14 and negative one, give me 13. So that is the answer we have here. Five minus seven, minus seven and 13. Now, since the 13 is the last remainder value, it means P at negative two will give me 13. Again, you can do other substitution or use the synthetic division method. So this method is using synthetic, synthetic division to solve a function. Now, using synthetic division to solve polynomial equation now. So here we have, P at X equal to 3S cubed minus 5S squared plus 3S minus 10. And they say we should solve this by complete, uh, completely solve the polynomial function P at X equal to zero, given that two is one solution. So we want to equate this to zero, P at X equal to zero. So since we know two is a solution of the equation P at X equal to zero, we know that two is a zero of P at X. So using the synthetic division, we are going to divide P at S by S minus two. Since this is S minus two, we are going to write positive two. Now, if it's S plus two, we are going to write minus two. Then we look at the term, the highest degree S cube, S square and X. So we didn't miss any term. So we're going to write down three minus five plus three minus 10. So plus three minus five, three minus 10. First thing we do again, bring the three down, two times three is six, six plus minus five is one, one times two is two, two plus three is five, then two times five is 10, 10 minus 10 positive and minus 10 is zero. Okay, if it's zero, anytime we have zero, the last term, it means the remainder is zero. So this is correct, P at S equal to zero, uh, if we divide, so S minus two is a factor of this equation, P at X. Now let's use the result of the synthetic division and factor the polynomial. So our answer was S minus two. So we have three S squared minus five S plus three minus 10 equal to S minus two times. This is what we get if we look we have 3s cubed plus 1s squared plus 5x plus 0. Uh, there's no constant value. So that's what we write here. Uh, 3s squared plus s plus 5. Actually, we supposed to reduce that by 110. So it's again 3s squared plus x plus 5 because division uh, there. So doing this, we should get the same answer here. So S minus two, which we divide S minus two by uh, with three S cubed minus five S squared plus three S minus 10. Our answer was three S squared plus S plus five. So three S squared plus S plus five multiplied by S minus two should give us three S cubed minus five S squared plus three S minus five. And that's what we did, we prove here. 
So we multiply by each term and we should get this. So then here we have S minus two equal to zero. So S is two. Then S squared plus five S plus four. Uh, again, this is quadratic equation. So we use the quadratic formula and we have our answer to be negative one six plus or minus square root 59 by six I. The reason why is I imaginary number because the square root is a negative answer. Again, we cover the complex functions already. A square root of a real number, there's no answer, but a square root of a, neg a negative value. And the answer you get is not a real, answer, real value, but rather it's imaginary. So that's why the symbol I. So that will be the conclusion of these lectures. Again, in these lectures, uh, we learn the concept of, again, using the synthetic division to solve and also evaluate polynomial function. Also, we discuss about the concept of uh, remainder and factor theorems. So again, thank you.